today with uh, Chris Voss. He uh, kindly joined us from Georgetown University. He's also CEO of Black Swan to discuss negotiation. Every day at the bank, we run into situations where negotiation could help us. And many of us as communicators uh, need to know how to negotiate. So with that, I'd like to ask my first question of uh, Chris. How do you get the courage to negotiate, Chris? Well, a, a lot of it really has to do with um, understanding how to prepare and with a minimal level of preparation um, because e each of us, we run through negotiations in our mind in advance and we have a tendency to often to defeat ourselves and we'll defeat ourselves usually in one of two ways. Um, we'll think about the worst case scenario and how if they said this, it would be nothing I could ever say and then so we've, and there's no point in negotiating because I already know what, what they're going to say. And we've defeated ourselves in that fashion. An, another way that people do is they think of a, m so many possibilities that they think that they could never be prepared for them all. And then they've ended up defeating themselves again. So actually w w what I say is think of, think of the worst case scenario. Think of the best case scenario. Think of one great open-ended question mm -hmm. to ask the other person mm -hmm. in regards to either one. Mm -hmm. The reality is the situation is going to fall somewhere between the two extremes. If you've done a small amount of preparation for each one of the extremes, you'll feel prepared. You'll feel you have, you'll have more courage because you'll feel prepared. And in fact, you will be prepared because it's going to range somewhere in between those two outcomes and you'll be able to deal with the infinite possibilities in between because you've prepared for both extremes. Here at the bank, we've got 187 countries and I think we have about 150 nationalities working here at the bank. So, question for you. Is culture a big deal in negotiation? Um, it can be the starting point of a negotiation and, and we look at culture instead of based on where you were born or your ethnicity or even the shade of your skin. We look at it more on a human level. We negotiate on, on, on ways that appeal to human beings. And then we sort of break the human culture up into three different approaches to conflict. And they are, there's two that are, seem, make a lot of sense, and then there's one that is just, we think is crazy. In the, back in the caveman days, we had the fight or flight response to threat or conflict. A caveman sees a saber-toothed tiger, who either wants to kill it and eat it, or he wants to run from it. And then there's a very interesting third type that wants to make it a pet. And these tend to be the types of people that we will run into around the world. And occasionally there's enough of them in a given place that they almost become what you expect from the population. And it can be the starting point of a conversation and many people look at culture as wanting to get the beginning and end point. Like, this is what you say to an American to get a deal. This is what you say to an Arab or Muslim or some, a Japanese person. And people want that to be the beginning and the end in terms of cross-culture. So if you, can, if you look at them in human terms and accept that there are these three basic types, the kind of person, the type that wanted to kill the saber-toothed tigers, a very assertive, aggressive person, tends to be what we think of Americans as. Very direct, very loud, very assertive, very aggressive. The type that wanted to avoid the saber-toothed tiger tends to be more analytical, quieter, much more thoughtful, occasionally dispassionate. There are types of societies and cultures that that are very quiet, sometimes referred to as high context. The things have to be taken with a great deal of context to understand where they're coming from. And there are types of cultures that are very gregarious. If these three cultures are the starting point for a conversation, and then from that point forward we really focus on the other person, regardless of what culture you're from, if I start to take my cues from you, if I treat you with respect, then you'll let me make mistakes. If you know that I'm treating you respectfully and somehow I use the wrong hand to shake hands with or I don't bow at the proper time 
or I don't pick up the right utensil. If I've been respectful all along and listening to you very carefully to try to understand what you're saying, then you'll give me the space to make errors and we'll be able to work together. Does it take a certain personality trait to be a good negotiator? I think it takes multiple personality traits. Of, of each one of these types, um, we, we refer to them as avoiders, analysts, as, excuse me, we refer to these three types as analysts, assertives, and accommodators. We believe that you have to be a triple-A negotiator. You need characteristics from all three types. You need the characteristics of someone who's assertive and so, or some who's extroverted. You need the characteristic of someone who's accommodating or gregarious that values relationships highly. And the analyst slash avoider type, I mean, there are some times when the best way to solve the problem is to avoid it by burdening the person who's creating the problem with the solution, which is a sort of avoidance on your own part. So we found that regardless of your gender or your type, you probably bring positive things to the table as a negotiator already. And I would advocate not that we change you, but that we add things to what you're already doing to make you a more complete negotiator. Whatever type you are, you're, you're born with certain negotiation abilities that are essential. Helping identify those and adding to them is what makes you a more successful negotiator. I really appreciate the time you've spent with us today. Really do. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thanks all.